Okay, uh, my very first Sterling engine, uh, consisting of a paint can, a crank made out of the paint can handle, some conrods out of coat hanger, balloon diaphragm. Uh, the little bit at the bottom is a paper clip, kind of wound around. I think I'll do that different next time. Uh, too much flex, you'll see in a minute. Uh, where the shaft runs through, it's a combination of a plastic washer uh, connector, like car windscreen washer connector, a bolt, a fair bit of silicone, uh, as you see, I've had some ice sitting in there for a couple of minutes. Uh, I have a PVC 4 inch uh, by 2 inch high or inch and a half, 2 inch high collar, I guess. And this can here, for all you Australians, is a Milo tin, a small one. Uh, for all you Canadians, you can get it at Superstore. Tastes good, and it's good for making Sterling engines, apparently. Uh, the displacer piston will be in, is inside there. And I made it out of this stuff. It's just a uh, old camping mat. One of those blue long ones, just long enough for your body. Uh, cut out two circles. I put a hole in one, uh, of which I put a curl at the end of the uh, the rod that comes out of there, and basically glued them both together with silicone. Uh, this whole thing is pretty much held together by silicone. <laughs> Hang on, the magnets have stuck. Well, I'll just poke that back in there. Now, down here, I've put a couple of little kind of just clips that hold wheels on on motorbikes and stuff like that, um, lawnmowers and stuff like that. Just a couple of small ones, just to stop the crank from floating. It tended to want to float down this way a bit. Now I've got a couple of small rare earth magnets. And they, I ignore what's written on the CD, it's just an old one. The CD is held on with a couple of rubber vacuum hose plugs. I don't know if you can see that. And, oops, our crank has slipped off here. Okay, now, to counteract the weight of the displacer piston, you want to put a couple of weights on the CD on the opposite end counterweight. Let's just do that. And as simple as that. And that pretty much balances or counterbalances the uh, displacer. Pretty rough but it seems to work. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, that spins freely. Now I sprayed some of just some gel lube. It's uh, Teflon based. 
uh, silicone base should be reasonably good. And of course I just sprayed little bits on all the moving parts, including some just down there. And around there to kind of seal the hole up. So I'll put this down for a sec. We'll uh, hang on. Okay, we'll light our little candle up. Just one tea light. I actually shoved in another piece of string just to make the thing burn, but I do have another one here. Uh, let's light it up as well. We'll just sit that on top of there. And there we go. can see duct tape around the can so I don't cut myself of course because I cut the hole in the side of the paint can with the die grinder. Uh, be careful. Of course, the crankshaft has to be, uh, the two bends in the crankshaft have to be bent 90 degrees, uh, as in the diaphragm is offset 90 degrees to the displacer piston. Actually, this is the fastest this thing's ran. I started it about 15 minutes ago for the first time. Had to adjust a couple of things. Now I put a couple of Zs or bends in the cranks, just makes it a bit easier to do final adjustments. Pretty loose holes in the paint can, but it seems to work. Okay. Well, one of the candles went out. I've just taken it off the candles. Like we're we're coming adrift. <laughs> well, there we go. Okay, looks like I need to get a couple of clips for the other end too. Well, this is my first Sterling engine, pretty rough, but uh, it's just something to do.